My name is Dominique Rosolo, and I'm an archaeologist and assistant research scientist at the Qualcomm Institute here at the University of California, San Diego. There's no doubt that digital techniques have changed the way archaeologists document sites, features, and objects. Indeed, structure for motion photogrammetry has been readily and widely adopted as an accessible and empowering technique for rapid documentation and visualization of all things archaeological. The result has been a proliferation of 3D models. And to reflect on this for a moment, perhaps we have placed too much emphasis on creating and sharing 3D models, and not enough on how they can be used to reveal something new or elusive about past human behaviors or events. It's important to note that such surface models privilege geometry and color over other more subtle or even intangible attributes, such as smell or taste or sound. Even more tactile characteristics like smoothness or heft are not sufficiently captured in these 3D models. But geometry is important, and it allows us to examine spatial contextual relationships that may otherwise be difficult to observe. And that's what I would like to talk a bit about today. I've been fortunate to be able to work with 3D data from the site of Hoyo Negro, a project of Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, and an effort involving an extraordinary team of scientists and underwater cave explorers. The cenotes and submerged cave systems of the Yucatan Peninsula are one of the most promising frontiers for Paleo-American studies. Following the end of the last glacial maximum, rising sea levels flooded the region's maze of underground passageways and preserved a diverse late Pleistocene fossil assemblage. A human skeleton named Naya, found in spatial association with the remains of now extinct fauna in Oya Negro, presents a unique opportunity for interdisciplinary Paleo-American and Paleo-environmental research. At 13 to 12,000 years BP, the young woman's skeleton represents the oldest nearly complete individual yet found in the Americas. As an archeologist, I'm interested in site formation processes in caves. And these 3D data, or more specifically, our ability to virtually access deposits or features via a digital twin of the site have been wonderfully informative. In Oya Negro, these 3D digital models have proven critical to current and ongoing anatomical and taphonomic analyses. These data not only serve as a documentation of the site, but our lab's point-based visual analytics capability enables project researchers from across disciplines to evaluate and annotate the imagery and image-derived point data remotely while guiding subsequent sampling and recovery activities. With Naya, for example, after marking or segmenting the points that correspond to different bones, we can digitally remove the substrate and examine the nature of skeletal articulation and disarticulation, which reveals how she came apart in a shallow pool and eventually came to rest on the cave floor. Similarly, we can now reconstruct where megafauna, like saber-toothed cats, South American short-faced bears, giant ground sloths, and extinct proboscideans known as gompitheres entered the pit and how they decomposed. With virtual access to the cave via a multi-resolution digital twin, this taphonomic puzzle would have been all but impossible for the archeologist and paleontologist who may never visit this remote and hostile environment in person. And what better way to interact with these 3D data than stereoscopically and in full scale in a high resolution immersive environment like this one? Here in our wave lab and in our sun cave, we could take a virtual dive into Oya Negro. Here, archeologists and paleontologists are making new discoveries from skeletal elements to significant spatial relationships that eluded us on our laptop screens. And the divers, well, they're seeing things that eluded them on their physical dives to the bottom of the pit. Digital techniques and workflows are opening up new research opportunities for archeologists but we must not forget to bring our intellectual tools along for the ride. Such 3D reconstructions are only representations of the physical world, shaped and saddled by limitations inherent in the techniques we deploy. Our challenge is to move beyond seeing models as objects themselves, but as a means by which we can delve into questions about the past in new and interesting ways.